How is it possible that two planes had wheel problems in two days? One lost a wheel on takeoff and another one had a puncture. Let's make it clear with the help of unpublished 3D images. Today, as you may have understood, I want to talk to you about two small plane crashes which fortunately caused neither victims nor injuries, so nothing serious happened. The first accident occurred on July 9th and involved a Boeing B757-200 headed from Los Angeles to Denver, which, however, lost its wheel during takeoff. Fortunately, he managed to land without problems, even with one less wheel, and all 174 passengers present got off the plane unharmed. The second accident occurred on July 10th and involved the right wheel of an American Airlines Boeing 737-800 headed from Tampa to Phoenix, which caught fire while it was taxiing on the runway. In this case, the pilot managed to break in time, disembarking all 176 passengers safely. One might wonder, how is it possible that two accidents of this type occurred in two days? Well, first of all, let's consider that the causes are still to be clarified and that the investigations are still ongoing. So what I would like to do is take this opportunity to understand a little how the tires of an airplane work and how their maintenance, since it is a super interesting topic and one about which not much is known. The basic components of an airplane tire are rubber, nylon fiber and steel. These materials are arranged in various overlapping levels which are combined together through a series of chemical and mechanical processes. All these materials are used because airplane tires must be extremely durable. Consider that firstly, they have to support the weight of the plane and secondly, during landing they have to slide on the runway at a speed of around 250 km h. So there are many types of aircraft tires. But there are actually two main categories, radial and cross-ply. Be careful, by cross-ply, we mean a series of fibers covered by a layer of rubber, so we shouldn't think of the ones of boats, so to speak. What changes between radial and bias-ply tires, as we will now see, is the number of layers of rubber and the angle at which they are arranged, which in turn determines the resistance and load capacity of the tire. Cross-ply tires have layers of ply arranged diagonally and staggered by approximately 90 degrees from each other. These tires provide greater stability at high speeds and reduce tread distortion under load. The second major category of tires is radial tires. These instead have parallel plies arranged at approximately 90 degrees with respect to the center line of the tire. In this case, lighter tires are obtained but on the other hand with lower resistance. However, as you know, there are also tires in a reinforced version which have additional layers inside them to guarantee even higher performance such as levels with materials similar to Kevlar. If we wanted to compare the tires of an airplane to those of a car, we could therefore notice some key differences. Obviously, the first is the size, given that if a car wheel has a diameter of around 60 centimeters, that of an airplane is around 130-140 centimeters. Then the number also changes. The car has four wheels, but if one gets a flat, it has to be replaced, because the wheels are barely enough to support it. The plane, on the other hand, has between approximately 15 and 30 wheels, depending on its size, and therefore even if one of them punctures, it is possible that it will still be able to land without problems, as happened in the case of July 9th. Then airplane tires have more levels inside them, the rubber has a greater thickness, and the tread design is also different, given that in an airplane its main purpose is to brake and not to drive. Another difference compared to our cars is that the type of rubber used also changes. In fact, in airplanes we talk about conductive rubber, which, as the name suggests, is capable of conducting electricity. This is because a conductive material, often carbon-based, such as graphite, is added during the manufacturing process. This is essential because during the takeoff and especially landing phases, enormous friction is generated between the runway and the tire, and if the wheel were not conductive, this electricity would accumulate, potentially damaging the electronic components of the aircraft. Aircraft tires are usually filled with nitrogen. It is a non-flammable gas which does not corrode the internal components of the tire. And this gas inside the tire is found at very high pressures, around 14 times the atmospheric pressure, or 6 times higher than those normally used for our cars. We are in fact talking about around 200 psi for an airliner compared to 30-35 used in cars. Why higher blood pressure? 
Well, because as we were saying, the tires have to withstand a weight of several tens of tons, which is compensated for thanks to a higher pressure. Obviously, here too, the value changes a lot depending on the type of aircraft. If we take an F-16, which are jets and therefore will land at higher speeds, we have a value around 320 psi, so take it as a general reference to get an idea of the order of magnitude. I told you this because the inflation phase is one of the most critical when inspections are carried out. Inspections are usually carried out daily, and the valves used for inflation should also be inspected periodically to ensure they are working properly. Consider that typically an aircraft is generally capable of performing several hundred takeoff and landing cycles before requiring repairs. Usually what gets damaged is the upper tread, so this part is simply replaced while the rest is kept. However, Inspections are specifically conducted to ensure there are no problems before the end of these hundreds of cycles. During inspections, the tread is checked to see how much it is weathered, whether it is weathered unevenly, whether it is damaged in any places, or whether it is too thin. We also look for cuts, bulges, or any other feature that indicates the tire is not functioning properly. Then the inflation, i.e. the tire pressure, must also be checked which is a bit critical as I was telling you because it is difficult to see if something is wrong. Therefore a pressure gauge is needed, the pressure can also drop by 5% compared to the nominal value. This is to avoid overinflation and underinflation since both can create several problems. Overinflation causes for example irregular wear of the tread and greater susceptibility to cuts. Underinflation on the other hand also causes irregular wear and reduces the life of the tire due to excessive heating. Now that we've had an overview, let's get back to current events. As anticipated, we do not know what the exact causes of the two accidents were, so we don't know, for example, if the maintenance was done correctly or not, or if there were other problems and therefore it would have happened even with a brand new tire. We don't know, but we will keep you updated as soon as the investigation is complete. However, what I would like to highlight is that every day tens of thousands of flights take off around the world, so the fact that there are accidents is completely normal, it can happen, especially if they are small like these. In short, the fact that within two days two planes had wheel problems is a simple coincidence and is well within the norm. Consider that this is such a small percentage that we don't have to worry, and if we have to go on holiday we can do it peacefully. Well guys, thanks for following me up to this point. I hope this video has helped you gain some clarity, but most importantly, to discover the world of aircraft tires, which is a topic that isn't often discussed but is really interesting in my opinion, and we'll see each other in the next video, always here on Geopop, Everyday Science.